When it comes to scientific and academic writing, there is a logical relationship between the structure of our writing and the cohesion of our ideas. And in this condensed webinar presentation, we're going to walk through that relationship to help you to become a better scientific and academic writer. Now, when it comes to writing, you need to understand that structure is really the foundation because as a researcher, we're trying to present writing that is an arrangement of many different parts and we need to establish relationships between these different parts to form the complex whole that is the scientific or academic writing that we are trying to produce. It's a lot like putting different puzzle pieces together and making sure that those puzzle pieces fit accordingly and present a clear picture that we are trying to establish for our reader. One really great thing that we can do is we can apply narrative structures. And narrative structures come in many different forms, such as this one here. We're used to having stories being presented with beginnings, with middles, and with ends, and each section contains different ideas. It presents the story to us in a way that's easy to understand. And regardless of the narrative structure that you may end up taking, whether it be a linear or a circular structure like this one here, the point is the same. You should be attempting to move your reader from one part to the next in a clear and logical fashion. Luckily for us, as researchers, we can fall back on the IMRAD structure, which stands for Introduction, Methods, Results, and Discussion. We can use this structure as a really great building block to determine what ideas belong in what sections of our writing. And when we visualize the IMRAD structure, we'll see that we typically start out with background knowledge, known facts, areas of uncertainty, narrowing our focus towards what our research aim is, before we broaden out, looking at our main results, comparing it with other literature, discussing the strengths and limitations and implications of our research for future research. When we visualize the IMRAD structure in this way, we get something that resembles an hourglass, and it's a really good way to think about how our writing can unfold. Of course, the IMRAD structure has a lot packed into it, and this example here presented by Wu in 2011 is a really great way to help highlight what each section of the IMRAD hourglass structure should do. What is the purpose of a title? What is the purpose of an abstract? What is the purpose of an introduction? So on and so forth. And if we understand what the purpose of each of these sections is, we get a better understanding of the relationships between these different parts and how they come to form the overall complex whole that is going to be our scientific writing. We can simplify this a little bit and think of the IMRAD structure as a general specific general structure. Our introduction should generally introduce what our research is about before getting down to its specific aims, hypotheses, or objectives. We then focus on the very specified methods and results that came from the research that we have done, or perhaps we go through a literature review and develop our more specific ideas from a conceptual or theoretical background. As we come down into our discussion, we want to try to generalize again. How is it that the results of our research are generally applicable to others within our field? Now, as part of this structure, we also need to realize that there is an idea called the general specific structure. So while the overall IMRAD structure follows a general specific general structure, each section of IMRAD can follow what is known as the general specific structure, where we should always start each section as generally as possible, moving towards the more specific aims or ideas that we are trying to present to our reader. This general specific structure is very useful for us to help control the flow of information to our readers. We want to start out with the general and familiar information first and present that as soon as possible, moving them towards the specific or new information we want them to understand and then concluding or transitioning towards additional ideas. The IMRAD structure follows this very nicely. 
Our introduction is the general familiar information, leading them towards our specific aims, methods, and results before we discuss and conclude. Our paragraphs can be structured in the same general specific way. Our topic sentence is the first sentence. Every other sentence in the paragraph is designed to support that familiar information by providing new specific information before we conclude and transition towards a new paragraph. And our sentences can follow in the same structure as well. If we start our sentences with the most general information, leading towards new information at the end of the sentence, it helps us to build towards writing a new sentence that will follow. The reason we want to follow this general specific structure is presented here in this visual. If we rearranged any of these images, it's no longer a logical progression and we lose the flow of ideas. We want to have the reader start at the most familiar and general information, moving them through towards new, more complex, and more specific ideas. And very much like a good story, our scientific and academic writing needs to move from that general to specific in order to create an opening that the reader can understand, to develop the action or ideas that lead towards a resolution very much like the beginning, middle, and end. And if we realize that this arc is useful across every section and every paragraph and every sentence that we're going to write, we can start to understand why structure is so important for writing a good paper. Which brings us to this idea of adhesion and cohesion. The example that I'm presenting you with here is two water molecules which are similar, cohering. They stick together, but they adhere to dissimilar objects or substances. For example, a water droplet clinging to a window. And we can use this principle of adhesion and cohesion to help us determine how to structure our paragraphs. But before we do that, we can return to our IMRAD structure to try to understand how coherence and adherence are useful concepts for us. Our introduction will cohere these ideas together in one section. And that is separate from our methods, which cohere very specific ideas together. They adhere to the results, which is also a different section. And then they adhere to a cohesive discussion. So we can already see by separating similar things into particular sections, it's easy for us to break up our writing across the IMRAD sections and understand that all of these dissimilar sections will adhere to each other while maintaining a coherent focus within each section. This is where the general specific structure is very helpful for us to establish cohesive paragraphs. Following this idea of general to specific, our paragraph structure ends up following our general specific structure across IMRAD. We want cohesive sections and adhesive transitions between those sections. So how can we do this? Well, we just need to understand how paragraphs are actually built and the purpose of each part of a paragraph. The first sentence, being the topic sentence, states the general topic of the paragraph and controls the main ideas that are going to be presented in the supporting sentences. All of the following sentences that support this topic have the purpose to further explain, give supporting details of that topic, and help develop and demonstrate your analysis and understanding of the topic of the paragraph. The concluding sentence is the last sentence of the paragraph, and it has a dual purpose, to attempt to summarize the main idea, creating a connection to a new idea that will be presented in the next paragraph. And there is a very easy process that we can use to help establish our paragraphs. We just need to follow this SEEC structure, which stands for state the idea, the general idea, explain the topic scope, give examples of the topic, and conclude about the topic. If we link this to the three stages of how we construct a paragraph, we can see the topic that should be stated appears in every paragraph's first sentence. Explanations help to expand the reader's understanding in supporting sentences. Examples provide evidence to the reader of the topic. And the conclusion helps to convey the paragraph's main idea while we begin to seek the next topic sentence. 
And conclusions are important because they help to control expectations about what idea is coming next. The concluding paragraph establishes all of those expectations and creates a logical flow for the reader to follow from paragraph to paragraph. So as we use this paragraph structure of general to specific, topic sentences, supporting sentences, concluding and transitional sentences, we can start to build our sections where every paragraph follows the SEEC structure to create a cohesive single idea in each paragraph that is adhered together or sticks together via a transition. So let's look at how that works in a practical example. Our topic sentence is very general. Global warming is causing a major decline in the world's coral reefs. Let's support that with some additional examples and expand on the idea. The increase in ocean temperature causes the algae which resides within the coral to be expelled, resulting in starvation of the coral. Here comes some evidence. On the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, 90% of the reef was affected by bleaching in 2016. Let's conclude and try to transition towards a new idea. Even though global warming is considered the main cause behind these bleaching events, pollution from snorkelers and divers on the reef may also promote bleaching. Here we can see a fairly simple paragraph developed using the SEEC structure. However, you can make much longer paragraphs than just four simple sentences. And in fact, I would encourage you to do so. The supporting sentences can be much more impactful than the example provided here. But we can also ask what is coming next. We would expect from what the concluding sentence is, is that we're going to learn about pollution from snorkelers and divers. If the next paragraph is not controlled by a topic sentence related to snorkelers, divers, and pollution, we're going to have an illogical structure and our readers are going to get lost. Our next paragraph starts with a topic sentence. Visitors to the reef commonly pollute the waters near coral reefs with residues of sunscreen and other skin products. In this case, we are replacing the words snorkelers and divers with visitors. So we're using key words to connect across a concluding sentence to a new topic sentence. In fact, we even use a similar root word, pollute, from pollution, to further connect these. We start out generally, and then we move into more specific examples and evidence about the residue of sunscreen and other skin products in the following sentences. The chemicals and lipids contained in skin cosmetics block photosynthesis in some coral. And the paragraph would continue. In this example, I'm only providing the state and explain. So let's take a quick look at a real example published within the literature. First thing that we would like to do to assess the quality of cohesion is let's identify in the first sentence what we think the topic is going to be. And it appears here. Let's see where else this topic is contained within the rest of the paragraph. And we can see these words are appearing in every single sentence. This means we probably have a fairly cohesive paragraph. Let's see how we can expand and provide some evidence and also move towards some new ideas. We introduce new concepts but also provide facts and references which show that we are using other people's evidence as we progress through, we can see we typically start with the green ideas, the general ideas first, before we get into the evidence highlighted in yellow and the new ideas, the more specific ideas in blue. Finally, we come down to the conclusion and we look for a connection to the next paragraph. We're indicating to the reader what might come next. Let's see if these ideas are also presented in the next paragraph. Here we can see we have very similar ideas that had already been generally developed upon in the previous sentence. And in fact, not only do we have very similar words being used, but we can also point out what the actual topic of the next paragraph is going to be. Using this sort of highlighting technique while you are reading is a really great way to help you understand if what you're reading or what you're writing is cohesive and follows the general specific principle of good writing.